In section 2.4, we are going to look at the difference between what's called an average rate of change and an instantaneous rate of change. So in, uh, in the, the first example here, we are asked to find the average rate of change. Given f of x equals x squared plus 2x, find the average rate of change on 1 to 4. Well, the average rate of change, we want to find the diff how far have we gone and how much time has it taken. So the function here is how far you've gone after a certain amount of time. Now let's take a look at the graph of this function very roughly. If we factor out an x, we get x plus 2, which means there are zeros at x equals 0 and at x equals negative 2. Uh, so we have negative 2 here is a 0, 0 is a 0, and of course this is a parabola that's going to look something like that. Now since we're trying to find the average rate of change, the function value is would represent the distance traveled. So we want to know how far we've gone from x equals one second, let's say, to x equals four seconds. And so what we end up doing is finding the secant, the slope of the secant line between these two points. Now this first point is 1 and then f of 1. Uh, and f of 1 would be 3. You plug a 1 into the function, you get 3. And this point would be 4, comma, and then f of 4, whatever you'd get when you plug 4 in. Let's see, 16 plus 8 is 24. But to find the average rate of change, it's slope of the secant line. And in this case, it's f of 4 minus f of 1. That would be the distance traveled. Where did you stop minus where did you start uh, over 4 minus 1 seconds, let's say, which, of course, is going to be 3 seconds. Now, if we plug 4 into the function, we get 16 plus 8. That's 24. If we plug 1 into the function, we get 1 plus 2 is 3. And that's going to be over 4 minus 1 is 3. Now that's 21 over 3, and the final answer is 7. The slope of the secant line is 7, and the average rate of change is 7 as well. In the bottom example, we are asked to find the instantaneous rate of change, or in this case, it's the slope of the tangent line at 3. So if we look at this very rough sketch, now we're looking for the slope of the tangent line at 3. And so that's going to take a little different technique. Uh, the function is x squared plus 2x. f of x equals x squared plus 2x. Now to find the slope of the tangent line, take the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over. And it's always over x plus h minus x. But the x and the minus x are going to cancel out and it'll always just be over h. Well, that's equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h minus x squared plus 2x, which is the f of x. And the h is going to cancel in the denominator, so we just have h. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus x squared minus 2x. And all that comes from just multiplying out the numerator. And this is all over h. Well, now the x squareds are going to cancel. And the 2x and the minus 2x will cancel. And we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared uh, plus 2h and this is all over h. Now that's equal to the limit as h approaches 0 the h's will cancel we have 2x plus h plus 2 when we plug 0 in for the h we get 2x plus 2, and when we finally plug a 3 in there, we get 2 times 3 plus 2, we get a slope of 8.
Now if we are asked to find the equation of the tangent line, uh, that we have a lot of we have almost all the information we need to do that. Uh, we have y minus something equals the slope times x minus three in this case, because we are looking where x equals three. Now, right here is the slope of the tangent line. We know the slope, it's eight. So we put an eight here, and if we plug three in for the function, which we've already done, we get nine plus six, which is uh, 15. Actually, we haven't done that, so it is 15. So we have y minus 15 equals eight times x minus three. Now, if you want to put that uh, into slope intercept form, that wouldn't be too tough. We have y minus 15 equals eight x minus 24, add 15 to both sides, and we get y equals 8x minus 9. Now AP does not require you to put it into slope intercept form unless it would be maybe a multiple choice question. So that answer is just as good as that answer. Now they might also ask you for the normal line. The normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line, so it's going to be exactly the same, except we're going to use the opposite reciprocal, so negative 1 eighth, and we have x minus 3. And there is the equation of the normal line to the curve at x equals 3. In exercise 10, we are asked to find the slope of the curve. So let's find this, that's really asking what is the slope of the tangent line at this specific point where x equals one. So in letter A, we have the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h, and in this case, x is one. So we can have uh, one plus h squared minus four times one plus h. Uh, before I left the x's there, and in this case you can just plug the value in right away. Uh, we have minus f of x, which is 1 squared, and we've got to be careful, minus 4 times 1 because we're minusing, and that's going to be all over h. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 plus 2h plus h squared, minus 4 minus 4h, and then minus, uh, this is going to be negative 3, so plus 3, and that is going to be all over h. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, 1 minus 4 is going to be negative 3, and then plus 3 is going to cancel out, so those cancel. And so we have 2h plus h squared minus 4h, and then that's going to be all over h. Well, one of the h is going to cancel out from everything, so we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h minus 4 all over 8, and not over h anymore because we factored that out, and we plug 0 in for h and we get negative 2. Negative 2 is the slope of the tangent line. So in letter B, when we're asked to find the equation of the tangent line, we have y minus, well let's see, what happens when we plug 1 into this function? We get 1 minus 4, that's negative 3, so that's going to be a plus 3, equals negative 2 times x minus 1. Now I'm going to be graphing this, so I want, and I know I'm going to be graphing it because it says in letter D to graph. Uh, I'm going to put it in slope intercept form because I'm graphing it. Now. Uh, AP Calc would not require this unless it was an answer on a multiple choice question. So let's see, minus 3, we have minus 1. In letter C, we're asked to find the equation of the normal line. So we have y plus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 1. And I'm asked to graph the normal line as well, so I'm going to write this in slope intercept form. Let's see, I need to minus 6 halves, so we have y equals 1 half x minus 7 halves. Now in letter D, we're asked to then draw a graph of the curve, tangent line and normal line in the same square viewing window. Now if we factor out an x in the original function, we get x minus 4. That means we have zeros at 0 
and a 0 at 1, 2, 3, 4. Now that means the, the vertex is going to happen at 2. If we plug 2 into the function, we get 4 minus 8, which is at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the vertex. And we're going to have a parabola that very roughly looks like that. Maybe not as V'd at the bottom, but we'll call this good enough so far. Oh, let's see. How about we graph the tangent line? We have y equals negative 2x minus 1. So we have y-intercept at negative 1 and a slope of negative 2. So we go down 2 and over 1. And that's supposed to be tangent at 1. And I missed a little bit, but it's not too bad. And then finally, we're asked to graph the normal line. And the normal line has a y-intercept of negative 7 halves, which is negative 3 and a half, which is 1, 2, 3 and a half, right there, and with a slope of 1 half. So we go up 1 and over 1, 2. So those two lines are supposed to be perpendicular, and with this very rough drawing, that doesn't look too bad.